Hey guys, it's Ali from North Bergen Public Library. Today I'm going to be reading to you one of my favorite stories. You can find the story and read along on Hoopla Digital. You just download it with your library card. Percy Jackson and the Olympians by Rick Riordan. One, I accidentally vaporized my pre-algebra teacher. Look, I didn't want to be a half-blood. If you're reading this because you think you might be one, my advice is close this book right now. Believe whatever lie your mom or dad told you about your birth and try to lead a normal life. Being a half-blood is dangerous. It's scary. Most of the time, if you, it gets you killed in painful, nasty ways. If you're a normal kid reading this and you think it's fiction, great, read on. I envy you for being able to believe that none of this ever happened. If you recognize yourself in these pages, if you feel something stirring inside, stop reading immediately. You might be one of us. And once you know that, it's only a matter of time before they sense it too, and they'll come for you. Don't say I didn't warn you. My name is Percy Jackson. I'm 12 years old. Until a few months ago, I was a boarding school student at Yancey Academy, a private school for troubled kids in upstate New York. Am I a troubled kid? Yeah, you could say that. I could start at any point in my short, miserable life to prove it, but things really started going bad last May when our sixth grade class took a field trip to Manhattan. 28 mental case kids and two teachers on a yellow school bus heading to the Metropolitan Museum of Art to look at ancient and Roman and Greek stuff. I know, it sounds like torture. Most Yancey field trips were, but Mr. Bruner, our Latin teacher, was leading this trip, so I had hopes. Mr. Bruner was this middle-aged guy in a motorized wheelchair. He had thinning hair and scruffy beard and a frayed tweed jacket, which always smelled like coffee. You wouldn't think he'd be cool, but he told stories and jokes and let us play games in class. He also had this awesome collection of Roman armor and weapons. So he was the only teacher whose class didn't put me to sleep. I hoped the trip would be okay. At least I had hoped for once I wouldn't get in trouble. Boy, was I wrong. See, bad things happen to me on field trips. Like my fifth grade school, when we went to the Saratoga battlefield, I had this accident with a Revolutionary War cannon. I wasn't aiming for the school bus, but of course I got expelled anyway. And before that, at my fourth grade school, when we took a behind the scenes tour of the Marine World Shark Pool, I sort of hit the wrong lever on the catwalk and our class took an unplanned swim. And the time before that, well, you get the idea. This trip was determined to be good.